We're here with the first C Sharp Unity tutorial, and uh, we're going to start making a series of tutorials showing you some of the really neat language features available in C Sharp. And uh, by the end of this, hopefully, no one will ever use JavaScript again. So we're going to start off by uh, by doing events and delegates. And to a lot of people, when they hear events and delegates, they basically draw a complete blank. So this is a really powerful feature available to C Sharp. And this one happens to be available to JavaScript as well. But some of the features we go into later on are going to be a C Sharp only. So uh, this is one of the biggest questions we get here is uh, what are events and delegates? Now all of our plugins in the documentation section will have a section where there's a manager class that fires events. And this is what we're going to go ahead and learn about today. And we're going to learn it in the context of a normal game, but we'll also apply it to the plugins as well. So this section here is, uh, is basically all of the events available that you can subscribe to from the manager class. And, and this is a, a huge point of confusion for people. So let's jump right into a real simple example here. And hopefully we'll be able to give you guys something that you can use in your games to make coding a lot more pleasant. So we got a real simple uh, scene set up here. Pretty much nothing to it. Actually, there is pretty. There's exactly nothing to it. Uh, we have a couple empty scripts, and we'll start off with the event manager. And we're essentially just going to follow the same naming convention and have a manager be an object that's in your scene that will have events available that you can subscribe to from other objects. So the first piece of an event is the delegate. And the delegate is basically going to be the, the type of function that you're going to need to use to listen to the event. That'll make sense in a few minutes as soon as we see exactly how this goes. So we're going to create one called power up handler. And we'll give it one parameter, which is a Boolean. It says is powered up. So the delegate on its own doesn't do anything. It's, it's basically just a, a type def. It's a way of, of defining what the function needs to look like that you're going to listen to the event with. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and make an event to go with this delegate as well. So you can see that we used the power up handler type that we just created here. So this is letting the compiler know that the, the function that listens to this event should take one Boolean parameter. So the name of the event is going to be uh, unpowered up. So straight off we can see this is all it takes. This is all, all the code you need to get your, your event set up. So we now have an event set up that any number of objects can listen to and can subscribe to it and uh, we will be able to fire this event. And what that means is we'll be able to, to literally just do something like this in our code. And if there's one or 10 or a thousand different objects listening to the event handler, it'll automatically fire the function on each of those. So we're going to make a real simple event listener now to go along with it. Because on its own, an event is nothing. It doesn't do anything at all. So the event listener is going to be uh, it's going to be a real simple setup here. We have uh, one function here that, that isn't relevant to the actual events and delegates, but it'll uh, it'll just illustrate something. So all it is is a is a little coroutine that will uh, bounce an object up and down. So you can see all it does is uh, it does a ping pong, and it'll uh, it'll just jump from uh, zero to two back and forth. So this is really just so that we can. Uh, we can see in action the events we're going to do, that we're going to be using here. So a good time to listen to events is in on enable. You can also do this in your start. Uh, I prefer to use on enable on disable, just in case you enable and disable this object in code at some point. That'll automatically take care of hooking up the event again. So what we're going to do is you're going to go to the event manager on powered up event. And you can see that MonoDevelop gives us a little lightning bolt for events. And that's going to be the event signifier there. So now to listen to an event, you do plus equals. 
And in this case, we're going to use the on powered up method. And you can see that MonoDevelop is smart enough to, to know that we have a method that fits the exact uh, definition that we set up here. And that's our delegate. So again, the delegate was just a function that takes a single Boolean. And you don't have to name it power up handler. Power up handler is the type. So you can name it anything you want. You can see we named it unpowered up. So just to, to sum up here, we have this is the event here. The event manager has a single event unpowered up right now. And by doing the plus equals unpowered up, we're saying anytime this event fires, we want this method to also be called. So we're going to do the exact opposite here. And we're going to go ahead and remove our event listener. And as you can imagine, we use minus equals. And again, MonoDevelop will fill in the blanks for us here as we go. So right there, that's all the code we need to listen to this event. So we'll throw a debug log in here so that we can see that this event is actually getting fired and it's getting called in our object. So now we need something to call the event. And in a simple case like this, on Powered Up, this could be maybe you have a Super Mario-like game and you get the Power Flower or you get the Star and you want some, you want the enemies to all react differently based on the fact that you just got this Power Up. So we'll just make a real, real simple button for this in our case so that we don't have to bother coding up an entire game here. Okay, so we have two buttons here. One of them is going to be uh, labeled power up, and all it's going to do is call on powered up and pass it true. Then we have power up is over. This could be when the star power runs out. You could have this happen after 10 seconds, or you know, for any other event that happens in your game could trigger this. So we're just going to call the same thing. We're going to call the event on powered up. This time passing false. And you can see there's one little line in here as well. We're checking to see if unpowered up is null or not. And that's really important. If you have no subscribers to the event, then unpowered up will actually be null and you, you can't go ahead and call it. You'll get, uh, you'll get an exception and a crash if you do that. So whenever you fire off your events, you should always check to make sure that it's not null. Okay, so let's jump in the scene here and we're going to run it. Okay, we have our buttons here. And let's just pull the log onto the screen here so we can see it. Okay, so if we click power up, click that a few times, and then we'll click power up over. And you can see we have nothing happening. Why is that? Because we don't have any listeners to the event right now. So what's happening is it's checking for unpowered up not equal to null, but unpowered up is null because nobody's listening to that event. So let's go ahead and stick a listener in the scene. So we'll just uh, throw a cube in there. Quick and easy. Okay, so we have our cube in the scene now. So let's just drag our event listener script onto the cube. Okay, you can see we have the event listener here. So we're going to go ahead and rerun this scene. So let's say a couple power ups, a couple power up over, and look at this we have somebody listen to the event now, so we're getting debug logs here. So that by itself uh, isn't very powerful, just passing around a bool, not doing anything. So let's make our listener react in a little bit more obvious manner. So going into the listener, we have the unpowered up function. So I'm just going to put some code in here. Real simple. When the unpowered up event gets fired, if the player's powered up, we'll set the color to red. So that's just going to be the color of the cube. It's going to turn red and we'll start bouncing. If unpowered up is false, we're going to set the color back to white and we'll stop all coroutines. So that'll stop the bouncing. So let's go ahead and take a look here. What happens when we run it? So let's power up. And you can see instantly that cube starts jumping around. And when the power up's over, it's done. So now the important thing to see here is the event manager has no idea that the event listener exists. These two scripts aren't tied together in any way, shape, or form. The event manager has no knowledge at all of the event listener. So why is that important? 
because we can go in here now and we can duplicate this. We can create a whole bunch of different objects. And these could all be enemies, these could be blocks, these could be anything in your scene, anything at all. And each one of these now has the event listener script on it. So let's go ahead and play this again. Oop, let's actually do that while well, we're not in play mode so that it remembers our change. And remember, event listeners, you can have an unlimited number of event listeners. Okay, so now let's play this scene. See, same scene, we didn't change any code at all in our event manager. Our event manager is identical. All we did is duplicate the block, so watch what happens when we trigger the power up. So now we have all of the blocks listening to that same event. And they'll also hear when we click it off. So you can see events are a really powerful way when you have uh, more than one listener involved. You can make your code a lot more loosely coupled, which is great for reusing. You know, say you want to use this uh, event manager in a different scene, you can do that without a problem. You just put the event manager in that scene and anybody in that scene that wants to listen to the events can go ahead and do so. All right, that wraps up this tutorial. Thanks for watching.